I work on the word, the word works on me. Say, I receive the word, I believe the word, I work on the word, the word works on me. Now, today, I just want to speak to you briefly. Uh, I want to talk to you on something very, very important. I'm not preaching, just want to talk to you on something important that, is, that needs to be addressed. And then from tomorrow, I will be preaching. Hallelujah. Now, I want to speak on something I have titled dealing with family cycles. Say family cycles. No, say dealing with family cycles. Are you here? Say dealing with family cycles. I have done an in-depth study into families. And uh, I have realized that there are some things that even... Medical doctors will tell you runs through families. It is known that if your father had diabetes, chances are that it can go to one of the children. It is known that if your mother had hypertension, chances are that you might suffer it. It is known that when some things are within the family, chances are that it trickles down to other members of the family. And uh, that which is physical also happens in the spirit. Actually, it is from the spirit that things manifest in the physical. Before those things could happen physically, there must be a spiritual cause or a spiritual, um, I always say, anything that happens physically has got a spiritual cause or a spiritual consequence. Anything that happens here in the realm of the physical is either caused by something spiritual or things that happen here in the physical has got spiritual consequences. Now, family represents a source. Every one of us here, we come from certain families. You know, uh, my Bible biological father was a bishop, that doesn't mean I automatically became a bishop. My other brothers and sisters, some of them are very, 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 very bad. <laughs> Actually, my next born is a rapper. But by the grace of God, since last year, I have stopped him by force, by tender. He raps, you know, hip hop. You know, we come to a point and we realize that when certain things originate from your souls and you don't deal with them, it trickles down to you. And most of the time, today I wish everybody would listen to me very well. Most of the time, we don't really take notice of it and we normally think, oh, it's normal. But can I tell you something? In Genesis, the devil was called a serpent. When the devil in Genesis that was called a serpent was not dealt with, by the time the devil grows from Genesis to from Genesis, Exodus, move through the whole Old Testament and get to revelations in the New Testament. The devil was no longer called a serpent. The devil was called an old dragon. You know why? The serpent you don't deal with grows, matures to become an old dragon. There are some things that when you start seeing them in your life and you start seeing them happening in the family, if you don't deal with them at the elementary stages, they grow, they mature, and it becomes very difficult to deal with. The same Amalekites that God said to Saul, go kill them, and Saul spared some of them. It was in the same battle of the Amalekites that Saul died. What you don't deal with now, if you don't take care, can deal with you. Anything that has brought anybody down in life, they began as something small. They began as a seed. The seed grows. The seed grows. And you don't take care of it. 
And by the time you realize it takes care or it takes over you and now you cannot even control it. If there is something that has been growing in you that began from your source or that you even picked it up along the way, tonight it is my prayer that we shall deal with it. Because there are some things that if you don't take time to deal with, they will deal with you. Give me Psalm 11. Verse 3, Psalm 11, verse 3, quickly. Psalm 11, one, go. Shall we read one, go? Give me um, 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 King James or New King James. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous what? What can the righteous what? In other words, if your foundations are messed up and you are born again, to, to be righteous means to have a right standing with God. That means you are born again. If you don't take care of your foundations, it will be very difficult for you to make certain accomplishments in life. Say my foundations. Your foundations signify the bedrock, the substratum, the platform on which your life is built. That which you begin with, if you are not careful, listen to me. The Bible says if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, assuming this chair, sir, can I have this chair? This chair is a foundation. And we decide to put all these mega speakers on them. Put about 10 of them before we realize this chair will crash. Why? Because the foundations is not solid enough to be able to hold that which we are placing on. You know what? If you don't deal with your foundations, the enemy will crush you before you rise. But tonight, my assignment is simple. If there is a foundation within your family or a foundation, something you picked up along the line, we are here to deal with it. Why is it that even in this country, any time there is election, there is fear and tension? It is a foundation. If it is not dealt with once and for all, it will keep repeating. Tonight, say tonight, in the name of Jesus, every evil foundation in my family, in this country, we declare, catch fire. The Bible says, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous what do? Give me Judges. Let's take Judges. Um, um, Gideon as an example. Judges chapter 6, verse 11. Let's read through quickly. Judges chapter 6, verse 11. Just want to go through quickly and then we can pray. Shall we read one go? Mm-hmm. Now, the angel of the Lord said to Gideon, the Lord is with you who? Mighty man of who? Mighty man of who? The angel came from God, told a man on earth, God had sent this angel to deliver a message to Gideon. In the realm of the spirit, on the mind of God, God is calling Gideon a mighty man of valor. Now, let's hear the response of Gideon. Uh-huh. 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 This is what we normally say. If I actually go to church, why is this thing happening to me? If God is really with me, why is the family broken like this? If God is really with us, why are we wallowing in poverty? How many of you have said that before? Me, I've said that before. You know, sometimes you look at the situation that is going on and you begin to question, why is this thing happening? And, and you know... The man, the, 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 the angel said, God is with you, mighty man of valor. 
In other words, if we bring it in the um, um, New Testament um, 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 system, we will say this is a righteous man, a man God with, is with, a man that is born again. You, he, God, in his infinite wisdom, saw Gideon as a mighty man of valor. But he, according to Gideon, there is nothing mighty about his life. There is nothing good. As when somebody, when you watch, uh, and somebody say, uh, good morning. Some people respond, what is good about this morning? There is nothing good about the morning. Gideon said, what is good with me if God is with me? Now let's continue, quickly. Uh -huh. He says, and, uh -huh, did not God bring us out of Egypt? Some of us, we have heard testimonies of the things that God has done. Why is it not happening to us now? We have heard how God healed somebody of cancer. I have seen in myself, me, myself in Eldoret, how a woman testified to me how she got healed. I prayed for her of, of HIV and she got healed. How people are seeing serious testimonies. Why is it not happening? Now let's see the answer. Uh -huh. Next verse, quickly. Mm hmm Uh -huh. when Gideon was talking about his weakness God was talking about his strength can I tell you something sometimes you don't have to see yourself as people see you you don't have to see yourself as the situation is telling you you've got to see yourself in the mirror of the word of God and tell yourself when the, the Bible says even the weak should say I am strong even the poor should say I am rich you don't have to see if you judge yourself and see yourself in the mirror and in the eye of how people see you there is nothing you shall be able to do in life because can i tell you something if you ask me sir, what is, you are musimbe right if you ask me um, um if god comes to ask me do you know musimbe i can give god 101 reasons why he should not bless him i can give god 101 reasons why this man does not qualify for god's blessings but you know what according to god god does not see musimbe based on what how I see him or how even he see himself God sees him according to that which is written in the realm of the spirit concerning him as Gideon saw himself as weak God said you are a mighty man of valor you can conquer the nation regardless of how you see yourself God sent me to tell you you are a mighty woman a mighty man regardless of what people are saying about you it's it, it is inconsequential that which God is saying is what matters can I tell you everyone can tell you so many things but if you focus on what you are hearing and what you can I tell you something you know why people talk about you because you are a great man can I tell you something the one sign that tells me without even I'm not forget about prophets see me as David if you by experience I can tell you, anybody that is talked about more, accused more, frustrated more, attacked more, it is a sign of greatness. So anytime people are accusing you in the office, frustrating you, attacking you, everything you try, it seems like it's not working. It's a sign that God is about to do something bigger, something better in your life. Check the scriptures. Anybody whose life was, whose birth was a struggle, that person emerged as a great man. Check the scriptures. But the people that were just born, we hear of them once, that their names never appear. If you are struggling, it's a sign there is greatness within you. I said, there is greatness within you. I said to you, we say, I'm praying to God for a breakthrough. I'm trusting God for a breakthrough. Do you know the meaning? The word breakthrough. Say breakthrough. Say breakthrough. Before you get a breakthrough, it means that there must be a limitation, an obstacle. So you break it and you come through. Is there is something that you are, that is resisting you, it is a sign that you are a candidate 
expected for a breakthrough it is a sign that you are close to a miracle it is a sign that something big something mind-blowing something supernatural is about to break forth in your life regardless of what people say about you how people see you what they say or do not say I came with one voice to declare God said to Gideon go in this your might go and conquer the nation you shall overcome you shall overrule and you shall survive this shout I will survive this Gideon said take me back to the scripture God said go in this your might quickly and then go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel from the Midianites now God was seeing Gideon as big but Gideon, God, Gideon seeing himself as small and incapable now for Gideon to be able to do that which God was asking him to do God was telling him you know it's not like you cannot do something you can do it you've got the power you've got the grace you've got the skill you've got the wisdom some of you have got degrees as long as a thermometer but still nothing seems to be happening but can I tell you something once before God could use Gideon to accomplish something great God told Gideon something and that is where we are going to take me to verse 26 quickly God told Gideon you are big the problem is not you but the problem is your foundation and that is where we are the problem is not the nation the problem is some altars that has been erected tonight we shall crush them get, get me to verse 25 25 you know what i've been reading this scripture but this afternoon when i read it i said huh? i've been teaching this but i have never taught this thing in this way i always teach people to break altars but i realize that after you break one altar, you've got to erect another altar. When we break the altar of violence in this country to, to, today and Friday, we erect altars of peace, altars of stability in this nation. It says, now let's go. Now it came to pass that that same night, the Lord said to him, take your father's young what? Your father's young what? The second bull of seven years old. Now, you know, that is why at times God wants Gideon to do something and then he wants to go tell Gideon to go break altars. But anytime you see a bull, a lamb is talking about sacrifice. You understand? God did not say take the bull that is eight years old, nine years old. He said how many years? Seven. You know, some people don't understand scripture. They talk by heart and they say things without understanding. Oh, why is that? Are you collecting offering of a certain figure? I mean, it's not biblical. Can I tell you something? They don't know Bible. I can prove to you from scripture that any time God asks for offering, he asks for a specific figure. God said, take the second bull, not the first one. The second bull of how many years old? Why not eight? Why not nine years? And tear down the altar of bad that your father has. There are certain things that are in our foundations that needs to be teared down so that the mighty man in us can come out. So that the great woman in you can come out. So that the great man in you can come out. And tear down the altar of bad that your father has. And cut down the wooden image besides it. Next verse, quickly. The first thing God says, tear down the altar. You are a mighty man. Before you can go to war and win. I want you to tear down the altar. Take a bull. Make a sacrifice. Break the evil altar. You don't break altars with your mouth. You break altars with the sacrifice. Number two. And build an altar of the Lord, an altar to the Lord, to your God on top of this rock, on top of this rock in the proper arrangement, and take the second bull and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image which you have cut down. Now, he was told after he has broken down the evil altars, build another altar. I always teach people break the altars but i have always been forgetting build another altar if you break altars of bad marriage in your family that is not it build an altar of good marriage if you break an altar of poverty in your family build another altar of prosperity you understand there were two things that gideon was instructed to do but most of the time preachers only teach on one breaking one altar and not doing the other one 
tonight we shall break every evil altar in your family any evil altar that has speak that is speaking poverty we command it to pray any evil altar that is speaking bad marriage we command it to pray any evil altar that is speaking struggle we command it to pray in the name of jesus and we erect altars of good marriage we erect altars of good health we erect altars of prosperity you know what i don't believe the fact that your mother has it you should have it and you know what it is supposed to be but you can rise up as a believer and crush it break that system i get what i'm saying gideon was asked to break it and after he broke it and he went to war he overcame and won the, and got a victory tonight we shall get victories i said tonight we shall get victories there are certain things we call them. Give me Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Paul said, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, there are some powers we call principalities. Say principalities. Principalities means princes of places. They are arch powers that overrule if you are talking about the hierarchy in the and devil's kingdom from the devil the next power you come to is the principalities they rule in places in countries in continents in nations in families and their responsibility is simple to exact the rule or to to exhibit their characteristics at the places they rule for instance in every Every southeastern part of every nation in this world, we call a principality the southeastern principality. In every southeastern part of every nation, there is violence. Southeast England, Bristol. If you've been to London, Southeast London, Bristol, violence. Southeast Kenya, Mombasa. Eastern Nairobi, Islands. Southeast South Africa, Pretoria. Southeast Zimbabwe, Imbari, violence. There is a power called the Southeastern Principality that causes Southeast Nigeria, it is worse. That causes bloodshed, violence, and roughness. Do you know the place where some years ago they killed some students? Garissa is in the southeast of this nation. Violence and bloodshed. It is a southeastern power. They, if every principality and what it does, if it is called, if it is assigned to cause violence, it causes violence. And the principalities that rule in families, they repeat family history. That is why Jesus said, you cannot go into a strong man's house, Mark chapter 3, verse 27, and spoil his goods unless you find buying the strong man. It is simple. What Jesus was trying to say is that for you to spoil goods in the family, for you to become prosperous, take the blessing, the treasures that are within the family, you've got to rise up and bind the strong man within the family. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Principalities that rule in families. Now, exert or repeat family history that is why some families nobody build a house some families nobody let me tell you my mom's family the first time my mother tried to build a house she went to germany and uh, i was a student um in the university she says my son i want you to do it now we tried to build the first house in my mom's land we bought the land started i'm um, supervising the work the house was completed. Immediately the house was completed. Some water company in Ghana comes says, all houses in this land, we are going to pull them down. It was pulled down in my eyes. I cried blood, but they didn't change their minds. The next house she wants to build. She builds a story building. I am supervising this. I built it. It was built with good things. We flow the first floor, continue to the second floor. Daylight, say daylight. It had no rain. Winds were not blowing. The floor collapsed inside. Then I went there and I said, what is happening? And the Lord said, you've got to deal with the foundations in the family. 
I prayed and fasted for seven days. After that, within three months, we finished the house. Why? Because there are certain things that repeat in families. Let me give you Bible, two Bible stories, and then we close. In the plain of China, in the region of Mesopotamia, there was a, a, a village called Er, and in Er lived a man called Abraham. Uh, Terah, say Terah. Now Terah had a son by the name of Abraham, say Abraham. In Terah's family, firstborn children don't succeed the father, their fathers. Terah's firstborn was Abraham. Abraham left the house. His secondborn was the one that took over. Abraham's firstborn was Ishmael. Tomorrow I'm going to speak on something I call open doors. I'm going to talk on Ishmael. Now, Ishmael, the man of God, that is the meaning of the name. Firstborn, Ishmael. Ishmael did not succeed the father. It was Isaac, the secondborn, that succeeded the father. Isaac's firstborn, Jacob, sorry, Esau. Esau did not succeed the father. It was Jacob. That succeeded the father. You think it is a coincidence? It's no coincidence. Now, this is the family of a man God calls his friend. <laughs> God calls Abraham my friend. And in his friend's family. <laughs> this is happening. Firstborn. Jacob's firstborn. Ruby. That one, the father even cursed him. He didn't succeed the father. It was Joseph that succeeded. Joseph's firstborn, Manasseh. Manasseh did not. It was Ephraim that did. It is not a coincidence. Your mother gave birth without marriage. You yourself, your first sister, same. No marriage. You yourself, you are hanging out with some guy. You don't know what will happen. Same mercy. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Any power that is operating in your family. Today we command it to cast fire. Your father never bought a land. You yourself. You are struggling to. Even, the one you bought you are fighting over. It's not your fault. It began before you were born. Let me tell you something. Let me give you the last story and then we pray. There is a man called Jesse. Jesse was a good man. Say a good man. Now I'm going to talk to you women that you need to understand something here. Jesse was a good man. Now in Jesse's family, the, the cycle that runs in the family was the cycle for sexual immorality. Jesse one day, Jesse according to Bible scholars had more than one wife, I think seven or so. On top of that, one day, Jesse went out and found a woman called Nezebeh. And Jesse, because of the spirit that runs in his family, finished the woman completely. And the boy came out called David. David in Psalm 51 said, In sin did my mother conceive me. David was born out of wedlock. Listen to this. Now, David said, Me, I will never do what my father did. Me. Never. He started. First, at the age of 18, David was given a woman to marry. Can you imagine? Saul's daughter, after he killed Goliath, Michelle. David went on. Took second one, Abigail. Next one, David had seven wives according to scripture. Seven wives. Hold it. Seven. One day, all men went to war. And David was seated. At the upper lattice of his palace. And he saw a black woman bathing. And his eyes was moving. And all of a sudden. Say all of a sudden. David saw Bathsheba. Say hey. Who is this one? Arranged. Planned. Orchestrated. They brought the woman. David finished the woman completely. <laughs> Are you here? Yes. Am I preaching? Yes. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Listen. David 
on top of that, went for another 10 concubines. The spirit that attacked his father attacked him. 18 women. Say 18. Now watch this. When the spirit was so strong in David's life to understand that when David fell ill and he was old, the elders of Israel said, let us find a young woman for her. If David doesn't do anything to the woman, that means David is unwell. <laughs> it was that bad. Say that bad. If that is in your husband's family, may God deliver him. Yeah. Huh? You are not saying amen. Yeah. I said, if that is in your husband's family, may God deliver him. Yeah. See, sometimes you have to do a cross circle. <laughs> Check! As you mean, you come from, your guy comes from David's line. The grandfather had four. The father had three. Chances are that. But say, by prayer, we will break it. Now, David had firstborn son called Abnon. The power that attacked his grandfather, that attacked his father, attacked him. And Abnon slept with his own sister. This other son of David called Ab Shalom, the man of peace. Ab Shalom. Now, the spirit that attacked his father and attacked his grandfather attacked him. That one, what he did was an eyesore. He did not go for the young women in Israel. He went for all the father's wives and finished all of them. Honestly, is this not a spirit? No, 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 no. Let's be, is this not a spirit? Is this real? This is not real. If, if, if I was there, I would not say it is madness, but I would not say it. It, it. it is a spirit. Say it's a spirit. Father's wife finish all of them. It's a spirit. And there was one other son of David called Solomon. That one I will not say. <laughs> Solomon had 300 wives. Why? What is wrong with you? I have got one. That one I'm struggling. <laughs> 300. How do some men do two and three? Hey! No wonder God says Solomon was the wisest man. For you to handle 300 people, you must be very hard. <laughs> you must be very clever. Handling one is, I tell you, 300. And on top of the 300 are the 700 concubines. Every spirit of Solomon in your family, every spirit of polygamy, we command it to catch fire. 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 fire. In the name of Jesus. Not that Nathaniel says something. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Do you know what it means? Nathaniel was a historian. According to him, history says nothing good can come out of Nazareth. Nothing good. So when Nathaniel was, was told that Jesus, a man was doing miracles, he, come, he said, no, 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 it can't happen. Because according to the history I know, nothing good comes out of Nazareth. You know, sometimes by history, nothing good comes out of your life. By history, nothing good comes out of your family. But some way, somehow, God can break the history and set a new level, set a new platform in your family. The Bible decrees and declares that I have not seen, ears have not heard, it has not entered into the hearts of men that which God has prepared for them that love him nobody thought anything good will come out of, of Nazareth but some way, somehow God broke history, tonight may God break history in your favor I don't care the history in your family, it may be alcoholism, it may be bad marriage, it may be poverty it may be shame, it may be disgrace, your grandfather was disgraced grace your grandmother was disgraced that is the history we know but if god could break history and let something good 
come out of Nazareth, I prophesy over your life. Something good is about to break through in your family, regardless of the system that has been set, regardless of the law in the family. Nobody may be married, but you shall get married. Nobody may prosper, but you shall prosper. People are in polygamy, but I pray in the name of Jesus that it shall never happen to you. I speak and I declare the Bible says God chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the weak things of the world to confound the mighty and the base things of the world as he chosen. I pray for you. Things may not look good. You may not have it all together. The family may be shattered, but may God choose your family. May God choose your family. May something new come out of your life. Isaiah the prophet said the other day God declared in Isaiah ah I do a new thing he said remember not the former things do you know what God said he said do not remember the former things don't remember the fact that your mother didn't get married your grandmother didn't get married don't remember the fact that your grand your husband's family polygamy is there don't remember the fact that there is alcoholism don't remember the fact that people are in poverty he says behold I do a new thing I prophesy let something new let something new let something new burst forth in your family a new realm of prosperity a new realm of favor a new cycle that will shock your world if you are here shout I receive it shout something new is breaking forth in my family Nathaniel said is there anything good that can come out of Nazareth to an extent that when Jesus went to Nazareth, the people in Nazareth said to him, who is this? Miracle worker. For where? What are you talking about? Jesus, miracle. We know him here. His father is a carpenter. They actually call Jesus a carpenter. His father is a carpenter. So according to family history, he's also supposed to be a carpenter. So because of that, the power within Jesus could not work. Mark chapter 6 says Jesus could not. It didn't say Jesus didn't. Didn't is different from couldn't. Did you do grammar? The Bible said Jesus could not. Give me Mark chapter 6 and then I close. Jesus, no, no, stop. Time is fast spent. When you go home, read. The Bible said Jesus could not do many miracles in Nazareth. He couldn't. Why? Because the family history was being told him. Be on your feet. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, in the history. Are you ready to pray? Why is it that in this nation, any time there is election, we have to see violence? Why? People have to believe in fear. Somebody said, prophet me, right after election, I'm boarding this flight to Uganda. Why? Why, why? why should people, it is a system, a history. Tonight we shall break it. Lift up your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare every history in my family, every history in my family, right now, right now, right now, I break it, 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 I break. I ready to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. I told you, in Genesis, the devil was called a serpent. By the time the devil graduated into Revelation, the devil was called an old dragon. The devil was, the serpent was not dealt with. It became an old one, dragon. The things you don't deal with now. I would never want my, my children to come and suffer the things my grandfathers went through. Never. I would have been a failure. Are you ready to pray? To break them? Say, in the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare by the power, by the power of, the of the Holy Ghost every cycle, every cycle in my family now, now break, 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 
lift up your voice and begin to pray Father, we declare every history in our families that will try to repeat in our lives. Today, we declare by the reason of the anointing, we break the yoke, we break the history, we set new records in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare, let the yoke be broken, let the cycle be broken in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare, let the altars be broken, 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 let the altars be broken. In the name of Jesus. Can I get four people? Four people. Any four? Two males, two females. Stand here. No. Uh, where's your husband? Come. You have a husband, so let me use that as an example. Yes. Assuming, say assuming, we, it is an assumption. Assuming Pastor Hayes married, is, we all know, already know they are married, right? Pastor said, is your wife here? Uh, Pastor, is your wife here? Pastor, bring your wife. Good, good, good. good. And assuming they give birth to Pastor Seth. And then this one, this one, sir, please come. They also get married. Pastor Wilson, come. And they give birth to Pastor Wilson. Now, Assuming in Pastor Mbatia's family, there is alcoholism. And in Pastor, Madam, what's your name? Ruth's family, there is a polygamy. So alcoholism, polygamy, mix. Produce this one. <laughs> and this one, in his family, there is a, what else? Huh? Money. Look at him, he's saying money. <laughs> there is money. <laughs> and that one, there is a... Poverty, no, money and poverty cannot mix. <laughs> Let's assume in sickness, bad health, and then say maybe bad health and people die young and they give birth to that one. So there is a complication. And assuming, oh, madam, please, can you come? Madam, please. Assuming they gave birth to this one and this one also happened to meet this one. Now, if you consider the background, alcoholism, polygamy, sickness, and come together, they don't know each other. They didn't check background, and they, they meet. And now this man has started exhibiting certain things, and this woman starts crying. You know why? Background. Foundations. 
The Bible says, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? You are born again, you are righteous, but things are not working. Tonight, say any foundations, any altar. Any altar. Can I tell you something? Forget, if, assuming I'm not teaching scripture, even science will tell you, my wife is a doctor, will tell you that hereditary can produce what I'm talking about. It means science. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Lift up your hands. But the Bible says with God, all things are. With God, all things are what? With God, all things are what? The other day, status, and I loved it. What he was like, there is no impossibility in my dictionary, something like that. Yeah. There, there is no, there is nothing like impossibility with God. With God, all things are what? Possible. Regardless of the background, God can produce something fine. And that is why we are here tonight. Say in the name of Jesus. Any foundations in my family. Any altars in my father's line. Any altars in my mother's line. Right now, break, 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 break. Now listen, as you are praying, imagine the altars that you are breaking. Don't just be shouting, break, break nothing. If it is polygamy, break it. If it is alcoholism, break it. If it's sicknesses, that be whatever, break it. Say in the name of Jesus. In the altar in my family, right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, pray, 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 pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Right now, I declare, I declare, every evil order in this nation that speaks violence, bloodshed, we declare by the reason of the anointing. Pray, 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 pray. Say in the name of Jesus, I enter my family. And I declare, like Gideon, I break the evil altars. Now, 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 lift up your voice and pray. Kada bahasaya, rade de bos kabranta ta, hande de bos kabranti bidi bika pa, hata di bika branta tan di bika ta ya, rada da bos shada da bos shata, ika da da bas si bidi bika branta ta, rada da bas shada da banti brianta, hada bas shada da da bas shata ya, rada da da bas shada da da ba, rada da da bos shada da da ba, rada da da bos shada da da ba, rada da da bos shada da da ba, ika da banda badianta. Randa da ba di bi anta ta, randa da ba shada da da ba di bi di bi ha, randa de bo shabranta ba, randa tan di anta tan da ba ta ya, ika di bi ha suta, iya branta ta, masuni mi kapai, igrende de bo shata, adan di bi kabranta ta, raba ba dua ta ta ya, ik de be hatusa, da da ba suta, iya da da bo shata, raba branta. Bashwanta, Ika Branda da Bosha Taya, Rede da Bosha Branda da da Basha, Ika Branda da Ban Banda, Rabat Brash da da Ban Tata, Ika Banda Banda Badian Tata, Rada da da Bosha da 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 Ba, Randa da Branda Bashwanta, Father in the of Jesus, we break every evil altar. 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 We break every evil altar in this nation that causes bloodshed in our families that causes pain. Ika basuta iye brentete hanuni mi kapate ya abranta tandi anta ha suni mi kapate ibrentete di anta ha akoda basuta taya. Rapa padu antata, ika padu sada dahaya. Rante tadi antata di kapaya. In the name of Jesus. Now you are going to erect good altar. Say we are going to erect. Say we are going to erect good altars. Good altars. Good altars. Can I tell you something? Paul said we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. There are some. Families that 
They don't fight what you fight. Whether they pray or they don't pray, life goes on. Life is good. Are you getting what I'm saying? Why? Because if you check background, things have been done for them. But there are some families as well. Even when you are forcing, it's not working. When you are working hard, it doesn't click. They say there's a Chinese proverb that says, when the axe is blunt, more effort is needed. Right? When the axe with which you are cutting a tree is blunt, you have to exert more effort. When the powers in your family are not like the powers in... Can I tell you something? Never compare yourself to anybody in church. That will be the greatest mistake of your life. You don't come from their families. You don't have the same um, 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 DNA. Your system is different. Their system is different. Ah, that sister is not praying. Ah! You. By the time their fathers were worshipping God, their grandfathers were building temples when the missionaries came. Your own grandfather was going to Tanzania for some fetish priest. You understand the difference? That is the difference. When their, their grandfathers were worshipping God and, and their grandfathers were doing things, your own grandfather was going to Tanzania collecting things. And do you come to church here? Okay. Let's do this. After that, I'll, do, I'll minister to a few people. Name of Alex. 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 Sir. Alex. Sir, you don't know your name. Do you know your name? I cannot walk so much, eh? so let's do it quickly. Sir, are you Alex? You Alex? Alex. Alexander the Great. Say, it's my time to break through. It's my time to rise. It's my time to ascend. Today, the Lord said I should declare to you that that which has limited people in your family shall never be able to limit you. You try hard as a hardworking man, but you don't see what you are supposed to see. And it's not because it's beginning with you, it's because it's beginning with the background. People start to rise, they start to do well, and all of a sudden, they collapse. But today, I'm going to anoint you for a season. That a new season will begin with you, Alex. Do you identify with what I'm saying? You do identify with it. That people try hard to rise in the family, but they don't. They are suppressed. Men even don't become great in your family. There are certain families men don't become great. If you are a man, you struggle. But I'm declaring in the name of Jesus, Alex, that you shall rise. Give me oil. The Bible says, by the reason of the anointing, every yoke shall be broken. I anoint you for greatness. Have we ever met? No. You come to church here. Wonderful. I declare over you in the name of Jesus. Everybody stretch off your hands towards this gentleman. I speak prophetically. Lift your hands. And I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, may the Lord God cause a rising. A rising, a rising. You shall rise. 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 Anything that has limited you today, I command it to collapse. I see you finding favor before people. When did you get married? When did you get married? July 15. I mean, it's, 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 you are fresh, right? Fresh. Fresh. So, where is fresh wife? She's with me. Huh? Me in the congregation. Oh, fresh wife. <laughs> Appear. I prophetically declare. You know what? There is someone that appeared and said and spoke a very bad word and declared that you people, we spoke and said you people should wait and do this and do this and spoke and make a decree. Say you people, we shall see what will happen. 
But can I tell you something? You will see guys prosper. Do you know, it's not everybody that laughs with you that li liked what happened. Some people were in opposition. They didn't like it. But the Lord said, I should declare to you that you shall do well. Hold your hands. Hold your hands. I declare in the name of Jesus, whatever was spoken against you on the 14th of July 2017 in the middle of the night at 11 p.m. Sir, when did you get married? You said July. Which day in July? 15th of July. Thank yes. you. Because on the 14th of July, in the night, somebody rose up and spoke negatively over the wedding that was yet to happen. But today, if she spoke a word, I also speak a word over you too. And I declare, what is the time? Eight. I stand as a prophet and I declare over you too, you shall succeed. You shall do well. The curses in your family shall never work against you. Whatever was spoken at 11 p.m. on the 14th of July, the day before your wedding, I reverse it and I revoke it in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you and you shall do well. Take your seat. Madam, madam, there's something inside. Huh? No, hey, no, no, hey, yeah, why? Why are you rushing like that? Huh? Huh? Secret, something inside. Oh, why? There's something in there. Huh? You are not sure. Really? <laughs> why can you not be sure? <laughs> Lift your hands. <laughs> I declare. May the Lord honor you. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Receive it. Sit down. Sit down. Are you very sure you are not sure? 